ironies. That's my conclusion for this whole thing. Scars on repeat, ironies. Barbara Drayton and I can be a family right this instant, like Barbara promises. She can't keep her promise. That's ironic. She promised me that we'll be a family because her family broke up. So like to be a family in spite of her mother abandoning family is what she wanted. And that's ironic that she gave up on her family when we can be a family right now. And it's ironic that Roxanne and I are friends now. And it's ironic that Sydney Walker and I had a relationship from August 6th to Halloween and we made love every day and she always had like my fluids in her as far as I knew and she was cheating on me at the same time, you know? But it's ironic that she told me that her daughter is my daughter like five months after her birth. That's ironic. And it's like, I didn't have to miss my daughter's birth. She could have told me, you know, like I love Sydney. We could have delivered our daughter together. And that's ironic that she didn't tell me when I wanted to be there to cut the umbilical cord, you know? That's ironic. And it's ironic that she brought that kind of hostility when I found out that my daughter might possibly be, you know, her daughter. And, you know, just everything about life is just super ironic. Like, think about it for real. Like, sex is super <laughs> ironic for real. It's like, a, you have sex, it feels super good, but the faces you make, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, some of them are super, like, strenuous, and some of them, like, you're just straining yourself, and it's just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the faces you make during sex, even though it's pleasurable, your face doesn't entirely say pleasure. Sometimes it says surprise, like, <gasps> you know, like <laughs> and stuff like that, you know? So... It's ironic that pleasure looks like pain and surprise and adrenaline and chains and whips. You know, like, that's ironic. I love my son. I love my daughters. I love their baby mothers. I hope that they have a long and great life. I really do, you know, like... May Barbara, she wanted a family, so I gave her a family. We can be a family right now, but like, may Barbara raise our son the best she can because I'm not gonna be there as much as she would like. You know what I mean? Like, every single parent out there, like, if you think that when you have custody that the other parent is going to be around when you gave up on the relationship. It's kind of unrealistic, you know? Like, it's more realistic that we stay a family and raise our son under the same roof. But that's not what she wants because that's not who she is as a person because of her scars and what her mother did to walk out on her family. And I'm like, oh God, like, being so loyal to Sydney and the fact that Sydney was telling me that she was loyal to me and like and I'm like Roxanne and I being friends is super cool and at the same time super ironic because like she knows she said some pretty dark shit to me you know but I love you Roxanne and I always will just like I always love all my all of my baby mothers for real so in conclusion, it's ironic that, you know, like I try to do my best around these people where it's just not good enough to a certain extent, you know? Like I did my best, like it, 
another, another you know, like I, at work, I did my best. And I'm like, and I was doing the job they were giving me shit for. But it was like, but anyways, like, like, but in my personal life, that was like, like, my baby mother's asked me for a family. And it's like, it feels like they're giving me shit for being like, hey, I love you. Like, it feels like they're, they're giving me shit for giving them a child when it's like, you asked me for a baby, Barbara. You asked me for a baby, Roxanne. You asked me for a baby, Sydney. And I gave you all a baby. And like, you wanted a family. We can be a family right now. But it's ironic that we all just, we're all individuals. Like, we're individuals. There's, we're not meant to be with other people, like, attached at the hip forever. Like, Barbara promised we would be attached at the hip forever. We can be right now, you know, like, walk our son to school, you know, whenever we got the chance and stuff like that. Like, we can do that all together, you know? You know, save up for a car, drive him to school. Got my license, you know, like. I love my babies, and I love my baby mothers. And my life, I want a wife, you know, a wife who loves practicing sex every day. And I know that sounds, that's a super weird term to say, but like, like what I say, when I say practice it, I mean like, like we fucking fuck and we count how many thrusts and like we fucking like push the blood at, at the same time to our, to our sexual organs. And we count to like a thousand together while we're fucking and we, we like fuck a thousand times like every day, and that's like our sexual practice. That's what I would love in a relationship, you know, like a, a girlfriend like that, to have that kind of long, sensual, sexual relationship with. So like if, if you are my future wife watching this, hi, I'm right here, what's up? Let's hang out, let's be together. If you're one of my baby mothers that promised me a family, or if you're my buddy Roxanne, you know, like, we can always be together and raise our child together. And it's just so surreal. Feels like luck of the draw, you know? And it's almost universal among eight billion people for families to give up on one another. So to, so to you people watching this right now, you know, like the people that are like, oh, my friends are never there for me when I need them. It's like, shut the fuck up about your friends never being there for you when you need them because you're an individual. You only need you. You don't need anybody else in this world even though even though it's fucking great to have somebody, like I have family, like my dad helps me out, my mom helps me out. You know, like I have grandmothers and, and like people love me and care about me. I have like seven brothers and sisters. I love them all with all my heart. Like for real, I love all my brothers and sisters, all of them. And I hope they live long, healthy lives, you know, like, and I have, Another irony of life, I have no choice but to work until I'm 65 years old and hopefully, hopefully I'm consistent enough to find a financial strategy that will allow me to be a well-retired senior citizen by the time I'm 65 and ready to take that step and have that 30% off early bird dinner.
that's a lot of responsibility. And as well as, you know, the the voting population, you know, like consists mostly of seniors and stuff like that. So, you know, that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> you take care of yourself. The friends that you're like, oh, my friends are never there for me when they need me. I love my friends. I love my friends. They don't need to be here for me right now when I'm freaking out, man. They just need to hang out with me when we're hanging out together, you know? And as for the family that's, you know, here or there for me, or like, oh, my family's never there for me. Like, if you're one of those people, be there for yourself, you know? Like, you can't rely on anybody else in this world, even though it's, it's lucky if you got it. Like, this bridge right now, like, like if your life is like, you got beams behind you, and your beams are like, you know, your family and stuff like that, and they're holding you up, good for you, good for you. But remember, some people are born in this world without a family, you know? Like my son Drayton is born into this world without his family together, like his original family together. And so are my two daughters without their original family together. You know, like that's who they are. They're going to have to learn to cope with that. And I know they're going to hold that against us. And I can always reflect on this time and place right now in space and time where it's like December 2020. And I love Barbara Marsh. Our family can be together. I love Roxanne Biggity. Our family can be together. I love Sydney Walker. Our family can be together. I can always reflect on this moment in time and tell them that, hey, daddy fucking tried, but these people who are human beings as equal as I see me not good enough for them or something like that. And it's just, I am good enough for Barbara Marsh. I am good enough for Roxanne Biggity. I am good enough for Sydney Walker. I am good enough to be with any of them right now. I'm fucking awesome, dude. Like, for real, for real. And, you know, like, if you're my future wife watching this, we're going to have a blast, you know? Like, when this COVID shit clears up, we'll go on vacations, we'll travel around Canada and have a fucking great time. We'll see as much as we can, okay? And if one of my future wives... Wives? <laughs> if one of my future wives just happens... Wives? Just happens to be like one of my baby mothers and cool. That would be awesome for a child to grow up with the family that Barbara and I promised that we would always try to be because our family, our families were never together. You know, like our family can be together right now and just, but you take care of yourself and I'll take care of myself and like, we're all powerful and we're all beings and I have the power to become rich. I do. And I'm smart enough to become rich. I'm talented enough to become rich. But, you know, it's like, I have my demons too. They're always right there, you know? So my demons and I, are going to rest for now and I'm sure I'll make more videos in the future because I'm a media whore you know I'm Selkirk subscribe to my channel my demons and I are gonna have a good night